Hey everyone, my name is Wedge. In this void between M15 pre-release and release, we decided that it's time to review the new Commander spoiled in the set. The core set was very kind to us, providing us with six different new generals to start building around. Let's go over each one. Avacyn returns to be your guardian angel. No, like, literally. This new version comes in at a cheaper cost of 5 mana, while packing a smaller body as a 5-4. She keeps Vigilance, making her a dual threat on both sides of combat. Her first ability allows her to prevent all damage from all sources of a chosen color to another creature. I'm sure some of you tried to prevent the damage to herself and found out the hard way that doesn't work, so sorry. Her second ability made her very difficult to beat and seal this weekend, a property that will likely carry over to Commander. A cost of 7 mana allows you to prevent all damage to a player by sources of the chosen color. Assuming you have the mana and can stick her on the board, it will be very difficult for anyone to beat her. Avacyn allows you to build a defensive deck, but also is big enough to give you a win condition and strategies that need it. Playing cards that change colors, such as 8.5 Tails or Distorting Lens, will give you more flexibility out of the two abilities. You may decide to hide behind enchantments, such as Solitary Confinement or Rune Tail Kitsune Ascendant, to make it so that no one can hurt you. Another idea is to just be that one guy who gives the table headaches by preventing other people from winning or losing the game. The second ability can target anyone, so feel free to be that guy and annoy the heck out of everyone else. Just say it's a group hug or something. If you decide not to play her as a commander, she does play nice in the utility role. Kalia may benefit from another angel that can protect her in combat and allow you to cheat more guys into play. The only real downside with the card is that it can't protect itself, so make sure you have a plan to protect Avacyn while she's in play. Even Guardian Angels could use a little help. Jalira, Master Polymorphist, runs very similarly to Muzio Visionary Architect, who we covered in our Conspiracy Spotlight video. Both of them have an ability that is random and thus can vary in power. As a result, the strength of either commander is dependent on what's in your deck. Muzio required a ton of artifacts to be useful, but Jalira players may be more inclined to run fewer creatures in order to hit something big. As a 2-2 for 4 mana, Jalira is weak and needs protection to get going. The old stereotype of girls loving shoes actually applies here. Get her some lightning greaves or swift foot boots and she'll be ready to go out and get you that tide spout tyrant. How can she do that? For 3 mana, she has a built-in polymorph that gets the first creature you reveal. It has to be non-legendary, so sorry Kozilek and Ulamog. Darksteel and Blightsteel Colossus aren't legendary though. There are two ways to build around Jalira, big and heavy creatures that win by themselves, or through a bunch of utility creatures that are useful in nearly any situation, like Maul Drifter, Draining Welk, and Riftwing Cloudskate. Token generators such as Master of Waves are a good way to go as they give you more creatures to polymorph away. Creatures that have an effect when they die are also strong, like Glenelendra Archmage and River Kelpie. Whichever way you choose, you're bound to have some fun. Obnixilus Unshackled is another returning legendary creature, and this time he's gotten much more menacing. Like his original counterpart, he can get bigger over time. If another creature dies, you put a 1-1 counter on him. As a 4-4 with Flying and Trample, all it takes is a couple of removal spells and he can get out of control. His third ability is the most interesting and likely most powerful of them all. Whenever an opponent searches a library, they sacrifice a creature and lose 10 life. Aside from putting a steep price on any tutors or fetch lands, this is such an aggressively costed ability that it's pretty easy to kill someone with it. Marilyn of the Morn Song and Obnix is a 13 life combo even if the first play breaks it up. There aren't many ways to force an opponent to surge, but just discouraging it in a format like Commander is strong. This is an easier to remove but deadlier stranglehold. The last ability is also powerful and allows Obnix to get big in a hurry. Plague Wind and In Garrick's Wake are two cards that immediately benefit Obnix. Even smaller effects such as Fleshbag Marauder and Innocent Blood potentially make him huge. You'll need to protect him against other sweepers, so get a Dark Steel Plate or a Shield of Cauldra to keep him in play. Sacrificing your own creatures will also make him big, so he plays well with sacrifice outlets and creatures that die immediately or often, like Bloodgash, Shriekmon, Sadistic Hypnotist. Getting more creatures in play just to kill them is another way to abuse him. Endrick's Master Breeder is a good way to power out a bunch of creatures to feed Obnixilus.
You may also decide to go the Voltron route using Night Howler or Lash Rith to kill people single-handedly. With all of his abilities and the size of his body, there are plenty of angles to take this commander. Kirkashonaki Ancient is very high on my list of potential commanders. His ability is just asking to be busted wide open. Whenever you would activate an ability on an artifact that isn't a mana ability, you can pay a red to copy that ability. A cheaper Rings of Brighthearth for artifacts is just begging to be built around. Some obvious interactions include Mindslaver, Called Out the Forge Master, or Bosch Iron Golem. Getting extra copies of Clock of Omens or Coalition Relic will allow you to get ahead of your opponents. Imagine drawing a card for red mana with Sensei's Divining Top, or getting infinite mana with Gilded Lotus and a Voltaic Key. I'm already trying to put a list together. Potential aside, let's talk about the other aspects of the card. At 4 mana, Kirkesh is pretty reasonably costed, and since you want to get him going as soon as possible, will likely hit the table when you have more open mana. As a 4-3, you probably aren't going to risk him in combat, even though the ability doesn't require him to be untapped or outside of combat. He may just sneak in for some extra damage when you least expect it. Kirkesh is in one of the worst colors, but his strength is dependent on what artifacts you play, so you aren't missing out on much by putting him in red. You'll be playing a lot of colorless spells to maximize his strengths and complementing with utility spells such as Gamble. If you decide to use Voltaic Key or the like to generate tons of mana with Kirkesh, sink it into one of red's many X spells or Rocket Launcher. Or power out an Eldrazi or Darksteel Colossus. The ability opens you up to plenty of interactions. Yisan Wanderer Bard is potentially the most interesting commander of the six and requires very precise building around. It is a 2-3 for three, 3 mana that is never going to attack because you're too busy activating its ability. What does the ability do? For 3 mana you put a verse counter on Yisan, then search your library for a creature with converted mana costs equal to the number of verse counters on him and put it into play. This ability requires you to run a lot of creatures and streamline your deck to ensure that you'll have enough targets at every mana cost. You'll likely prioritize cards that do something when they come into play, like Acidic, Slime, Hornet Queen, or Wood Elves. Or creatures that allow you to get more activations out of Yasan, like Seedborn, Muse, and Kyrian Ranger. At the very least, you will be running plenty of guys to keep him active. Yasan's biggest disadvantage is the fact that it takes a heavy investment to get him going, and once he leaves play, you have to start all over again. He is another commander who is heavily dependent on Lightning Greaves to thrive. You should emphasize strategies that maximize his abilities so that when he does lose all his verse counters, you will still be functional without him. There are other alternatives that complement the strategy of the deck, such as Quicksilver Amulet or Elvish Piper. Another interesting line is to proliferate the verse counters on Yusan. That said, with only Contagion Clasp and Engine as your proliferate options, it may not be worth the slots. Sliver Hive Lord is the sixth and final new commander of M15. It's also the biggest and most imposing of the group. For one man of each color, you get a 5-5 that's indestructible. At first, it's not the most exciting five-color creature, but oh wait, it gives all your slivers indestructible too. Things just got a little more interesting. The Hive Lord belongs in one deck, and due to the presence of three other five-color slivers in the Overlord Legion and Queen, it's likely to not even make it as a commander. That said, it definitely deserves a slot in your 99 at least. The ability is really strong and gives Sliver Tribal the closest thing to Avacyn Angel of Hope that it will likely see. If you haven't put this in your Sliver deck yet, it better be because you don't have one. Which M15 cards do you guys plan to run in Commander? Any of these generals look particularly good for you? Not gonna lie, Jalira is pretty much my jam. Let me know what you're thinking in the comments. Remember to subscribe below for the latest and most reliable magic the gathering information you could ever need. This is the Mana Source, I'm Wedge, thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.